my name is Lawrence Mitchell. I'm British and I currently live in Australia. I've been crazy about Kung Fu since I was very young. Although I've trained very hard for many years, focusing on the external side of training, I sometimes felt quite unsettled and impatient. I heard that Wudang Kung Fu helps people to find inner peace. So I got in touch with a Wudang Kung Fu master, Master Yuan Ji Gang. Through a friend, we organized training in Wudang Mountain. I hope I can gain the essence of real Kung Fu on this adventure. It's Lawrence's first day at Wudang Mountain to learn Kung Fu. Never before has he woken up so early. It's currently 5 a.m. Yeah. He must do morning exercise together with his fellow brothers. Wudang Kung Fu has stringent requirements for physical ability. From now on, Lawrence must do 500 meter sprints with his partner on his back. Although he's new here, it doesn't change the rule that everyone must take part in all courses. High intensive training lasts three hours every morning. This is their routine training. However, for Lawrence, he still needs time to adapt to the rigors of the place. Okay, finish. Stand up. How are you feeling? Fucking shit. <laughs> oh, 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 fuck. Okay, give me your hand. Thank you. Keep relax. Watch. <laughs> He's smiling. Yeah. <laughs> This is Lawrence's first breakfast on Wudang Mountain. Although there are many foreign students, the school provides only traditional Chinese food. Since one's health is a significant part of Wudang Kung Fu, the food is important. Therefore, eating Chinese food, with its balance of both vegetables and meat, is something foreign students must adapt to. Wudang Kung Fu attracts Kung Fu fans from all over the world. The youngest is only six years old. Some of them take years to learn Wudang Kung Fu and its culture. As the 15th generation successor of the Wudang Sun Feng School, Yuan Shu Gang is well known in Kung Fu circles. The main reason why Lawrence came here is to learn sword skills from Mr. Yuan. So we need, need practice like that. Every year, several foreign students make the trek here to learn Wudang Kung Fu. Over the years, Mr. Yuan has taught a lot of foreign students. He speaks fluent English. One. Close. Look, huh? Since Mr. Yuan can speak English, it makes things easier for Lawrence. Whenever he has a question, he just asks without the need for an interpreter. Actually, relax is very important in the Wushu. Definitely. It's, um, my previous training has been hard, and it's, uh, I've been learning a lot about being soft and trying to relax. Mm -hmm. But it's bad habit. Everything's very... Mm -hmm. Especially when you do boxing. Exactly, yeah. So I'm really trying to focus, but then I think too much. 
In both Oriental and Western culture, a swordsman worth his salt must own his own weapon. Lawrence believed that to learn Taiji sword skills, he should have a sword of his own. It's already 8 p.m. by the time he finishes practicing. It's dark outside, but the shops, selling Kung Fu products, are still open. As the home of Wudang Kung Fu, this place receives numerous Kung Fu students and tourists every year. I'm not sure about the price, though. Have you seen the price tag? Since he knows little about quality and what he should pay, Lawrence is regretting not bringing a Chinese pal to help him. That said, he's quite satisfied with the sword he selected. You see, you always like this. Oh, okay. See? In the body. See? After training for more than a week, Lawrence feels that the biggest challenge is flexibility and synchronizing his movements. There are no shortcuts. The only thing he can do is to practice hard. It's a common belief in China that a strict teacher produces outstanding students. Although he grew up in the West, Lawrence is happy to receive traditional Chinese training and education. Wudang Kung Fu attaches great importance to self-cultivation, which is reflected in many aspects of life. For children, learning how to be independent is a sort of self-cultivation. On Wudang Mountain, even though there are a lot of foreign tourists and students, this tiny town has preserved numerous aspects of traditional life. This is what? Okay. All Kung Fu learners have their own traditional costumes. Lawrence hopes that he can acquire a handmade one before leaving China. That's quite nice. Mm. Yeah, that's quite nice. Among the various types of Kung Fu, the most attractive one for foreign students is Qinggong. They want to learn how to leap onto roofs and vault over walls. Lawrence is excited to learn such skills as well. I've been told there's a student with some very good Qigong skills and that he can basically run up a wall which is about 15 foot tall. So we're just going to go and have a look um, and see if he can do it and see uh, how easy he makes it look. So it'll be interesting. Um, I think if I could have two, three weeks of uninterrupted training, I think I could get close. But um, nevertheless, it's still very impressive. Oh. Oh. <laughs> nice, I nearly got to the top. <laughs> I think I have one step though. <coughs> one more time. But this is uh, Wudang Town Centre, as far as I know. It's pretty lively. Uh, it's the weekend today, so I'm not doing any training, which is good, so I get a chance to recover. When we go to the Golden Summit, these are heat packs to stick on my chest because it's going to be really cold after the Golden Summit. 
No, we'll be wearing many clothes, so we'll keep us warm when we're doing the uh, Tai Chi sword form. Just a bit of preparation. Yeah. Um, five, five every day. Okay. Okay. And, uh, this one, you just... Lawrence is surprised that someone in this small town can speak English. In fact, the town only has a population of around 60,000 people, but it receives three to four million tourists every year. There are plenty of foreigners that come through the area. Therefore, it's not surprising that some of the people here speak a little English. Lawrence enjoys a satisfying meal. Nobody here treats him differently. He enjoys a leisurely weekend just like everyone else in the town. Today, Mr. Yuan brings Lawrence to the historic Wulong Palace to teach him more about Wudang culture and teach him some basic sword skills. With me and a block, you know, block the sword from here, yeah. here. Yeah. Look, look, you don't have to look. Block, you don't. Wrong, wrong, yes. Swat, swat, hot. Ah, it's looking to the ground. Yeah. No. Then you go. This is you can block. Because you, when you do like that, see? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that worse? Worse, yeah. The, especially this the blade is slightly button. damaged this from the no clash problem. of swords. No problem, hmm? The damage this makes them question the quality. People, if you uh, find a good sword, like a treasure, you know, they're, yeah, they're they protected are. really good. Yeah. They, the sword is really sharp, like, whoosh, yeah. it cut your sword. Yeah. They're easy. Okay. Mm. Lawrence has been practicing sword skills for more than two weeks. Most of the time, he practices outside. Today, however, Lawrence doesn't have to take his sword with him since he and his classmates will attend a special lesson inside the classroom. Then first, you have to learn the chanting. So there was a music and a cultivating your body. You understand about the pinyin, Chinese pinyin? Huh? Mm. Lawrence is very curious about chanting. In fact, lessons inside the classroom are a vital part of learning Kung Fu. The intense training makes Lawrence ill. A senior fellow introduces him to a local traditional medicine clinic. Lawrence decides to be checked out by a doctor there. Got some achy joints, so hopefully you can fix me up and I can carry on training. So we'll see how that goes. Yes, sure. I'm sorry. That's okay. Unfortunately, Lawrence arrives at the clinic during lunch. However, what surprises him most is the hospitality of a child who seems at ease with a foreigner in his presence. Okay. 
Lawrence has come across some Chinese medicine clinics before in the UK, but he's never been in one before. This time, he would like to try new things, hoping Chinese medicine could alleviate his pain. Today at Yushu Palace, Mr. Yuan organizes his students to engage in combat training. What they will practice is very close to actual combat. It requires a lot of physical ability and skills. I don't hold you. Huh? Just stretch. Yes. So I, I just go lower. That's why my up is easy. So you hold me, see? I still make you down. So I make your leg lose waist. <laughs> Mr. Yuan shows the move several times. In order to make Lawrence experience actual combat, he asks Lawrence's fitness coach to fight with him. This is really a big challenge for Lawrence. It's also a good chance to test what he's learned so far. Although it's similar to boxing, it aims at teaching students how to use the squatting stance in Chinese Kung Fu. The result shows that Lawrence has improved. It's very hard fighting in uh, Mabu, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's good. What do you think? <laughs> October the 30th is Halloween. Chinese students and foreign students have worked together to draw two posters. Currently, the student body here has students from eight countries. Nearly 20 foreign students are studying here. Although they sometimes can't understand each other due to language differences, for such a festival, they work together to prepare a party. When sharing the same goal, language barriers seem to melt away. Uh, let it dry and I'll have a think about it. I was thinking maybe a sad mouth. But we'll see. It's okay for now. I have no idea. <laughs> Some foreign students have been here for five years. They play an important role in organizing this party. They invite all coaches and students to attend. Everyone is ready to have some fun. Everyone enjoys some hard-earned leisure time. Lawrence wants to challenge Coach Zhang to a tug of war. There are several times that Lawrence looks like he's about to win, but eventually he loses. Lawrence will finish his studies in two days. Before he leaves, he would like to prepare a performance for Mr. Yuan. He can finally wear the costume he had made. Just had my uh, uniform delivered by Coach Jung. Uh, 
which has taken a few days to, to make, but that's pretty good timing because this afternoon I have my final exam with Master Yuan. Um, so this will actually look quite nice with the Tai Chi uh, sword form. So everything will be white apart from the shoes, but uh, I think I'll, I'll look the part and um, yeah, it will be a nice way to finish off doing the, doing the form. Bit of pressure now that the whole school is watching me, or my class is watching me. I just have to relax and uh, try and do as best as I can. Really? So that's all I can do. Just relax, go through it. Uh, hopefully, I'll get through without too many mistakes. Uh, Lawrence, you've already been here for a while. So today is the last day. We wish you show the, the Tai Chi sword. Yes. And you just do your best. Okay. It's some tradition, like a test. Yes. And all of you Kung Fu brothers here, yeah. but I don't, don't be nervous. <laughs> I just relax, okay? okay? So we start. Okay. okay. Good luck. Thank mm. you. Every student must give a performance before he leaves. This is not only a tradition, but also to show what they've learned. It's also an affirmation of their hard work. <laughs> For the period of time, I'm really and, uh, proud of you. I'm satisfied. But I really, for the time, not, yeah, not good. This time, for you, maybe a little pity. So maybe next time, you okay. should come press more. Yeah. Mm. There is a lot of pressure when there's, there's people watching that have been here for years and years. Uh, it's really difficult to relax and try and memorise the movements and try and keep them soft. So it was, it was really challenging. Um, however, I've only been here for two weeks, um, so I've learned as much as I can given uh, the hard training I've been doing and also the sickness. I've learnt uh, a decent amount of the form. I just need to, to continue to practise. Before leaving, Lawrence travels to Gold Peak, which is the holy grail for students of Wudang Kung Fu. It's also the tallest peak in the Wudang Mountains. It's a beautiful place. Maybe only in front of such beautiful scenery can Lawrence cultivate a deeper understanding of Wudang culture. Although he's about to leave China, Lawrence will continue practicing Kung Fu.